Hello, welcome back to the Racing Years, a series where I talk some great names in motorsport. Today's a little bit different because instead of one guest, we've got two guests in the shape of these Austin A40 Farina racing cars. I've got a Mark 1 to talk about and I've got a Mark 2 to talk about. So if you want to hear a little bit about the 60s forgotten saloon car, grab a brew and enjoy. So we'll start with this car, which is a 1961 Austin A40 Farina that was bought out of Charles Clark in Kidderminster. It's lived most of its life on the road before it was turned into a racing car three or four years ago. It was fully gutted and stripped right back to bare metal before sandblasted, all new bodywork underneath, and then painted in this rather unusual period colour. It's got fiberglass bonnet, boot lid and doors. It's been fitted with MG Midget front disc brakes. The, this car's equipped with Avon Turbo Speed tyres, so it's perfect for hill climbing and, and a lot of circuit racing will accept these tyres as well. Um, it's got limited slip diff, a trick rear end setup. All in all, it's about 650 kilos. So this car is equipped with a full six point FIA approved roll cage. It's got a straight cut gearbox. It's got full fire extinguisher system and it'll rev to seven and a half, believe it or not. So I've driven this car for the last year or so in hill, hill climbs and sprints. And if you're trying to get into an entry level historic motorsport, I couldn't, I couldn't suggest a better car. If you haven't got the budget to be driving Jaguar E-types and things like that, you know, this will put just as big a smile on your face. And this car will be going up for sale uh, at some point next year. So if you, if you are trying to get into it, then get in touch. So here we are in the engine department. And as you can see, it makes an ideal racer because of how low the engine is in the car. This one's fitted with a 1330 A-series BMC engine. Uh, it's got a, a Cooper S cylinder head, uh, big, big valves in it, ported and polished. Uh, and then it's got a swan neck manifold with a 45 Weber on it, uh, which all, all together makes a real sweet bulletproof engine that'll do 125 uh, horsepower and it'll easily do 100 mile an hour. Uh, it's got Alden igniter, uh, distributor in it, power light battery setup, lightweight alternators, it's got an MX-5 radiator, so it really has got all the bits to make it make it a lot of fun. So moving on to the 1966 Mark II Farina, this car is a full steel car so it's more appropriate for period racing, it's got a 1098cc engine which is what they originally fitted with, and I bought this car two years ago from the, the second owner of the car who bought it three miles from where it was stored, he drove it as his family car, for a year before it had a brake line problem and it was stored away in his garage until I bought it. Uh, it's, it came with all the original bill of sale, it came with running in stickers, every single option that it had from, from period and it had only done 30,000 miles. The car was originally black with a white roof and after sitting for 30 years there was a lot of grime but the bodywork was fantastic as it was dry stored for all of those years. So within a weekend of buying the car I got it completely stripped to a bare shell and was already trying to flick dirt off it. Uh, it went to a paint shop and uh, the whole underside of the car was shot blasted to get rid of the sound deadening and, and, and years of, of grime. Um, and if you are trying to get into classics, then it's important to, to know a little bit about uh, shot blasting and, and acid dipping and, and the rights and the wrongs and, and do your research before you get involved with it. So I had this media blasted, uh, which is in effect hard, hard granules of soap uh, that don't stay on the bodywork. But even if you did have some get into chassis rails and you pressure washed it, they, they would dissolve. Um, the problems with acid dipping and things like that is the acid keeps eating away if it's not if it's not neutralized properly. So it's just something to be aware of if you're getting into, into classic cars. Um, this is some of the original paperwork that came with the car, including an accessories book in which I have some of the pieces that, that were, were ordered, mud flaps and um, switch panels, uh, seat covers, and, and I've even got some original BMC seat belt uh, installation paperwork that were, they were obviously trying to bring in some some safety. Uh, this was early days of, of seat belts. I've got service manuals. Um, I've got a bit of everything, and uh, this will all go with the car when it when it when it does eventually go for, up for sale. So here we've got an original lubrication service chart from 1966 when the car was was first manufactured. And you can see we've got a, a 500 mile sheet, which was uh, in 1966. And then it steps up to, to a 3000 mile uh, service interval, which was also in 66. And then finally a, a 68 uh, year with, with 9,000 miles. Um, and this is the stuff that 
car people go crazy for. And uh, in a way, I feel bad that I've turned it into a racing car, but it was destined for the scrapyard as it was. And so I feel I've brought it back to life. And to keep this sort of stuff with the car, and it's got all the reg and uh, original ownership and, and things like that, um, it, it's, it's fantastic. So here we have an original running in booklet that came with uh, stickers that you would put in the back window of your car while you were running it in. And people would know, other motorists would know to, um, to, to give you a bit of a wide berth. Um, you go back to the dealership and have it serviced after you've finished. Um, uh, but the car was equipped with eyelets to pull the engine out. So as a, a motor vehicle owner in 1966, you were expected to be able to take an engine out to work on it. And uh, it's equipped with original artwork, um, which just looks fantastic. And it's a completely different to what you get with a, a modern car. But the fact that this is still with the car is, um, is probably one of the only ones in the country that has, has all this paperwork with it. So here we have a, an original Austin A40 Mark II trim specification book where it talks about your new veneer dashboard as well as fingertip controls, an enclosed glove box that has cup holders in it and the differences between a Mark I and Mark II was, was very minimal really. It had um, a slightly different dashboard, um, a slightly different grille and front end and, and then uh, four inches longer on the wheelbase so people prefer to, to race the Mark IIs. Uh, but it's a fantastic little booklet that comes with the car. As you can see, it had telescopic dampers originally. Now, if you are trying to get into historic racing, you've got to do it to pre-1966 spec. Uh, so you'd have to fit, um, you'd have to fit telescopic, you'd have to get rid of the telescopic dampers and you'd have to put lever arm shocks on the back. Um, you are, however, uh, allowed to, to put midget front discs on it um, from a safety point of view, really. And so, uh, but the, the engine bays uh, and most of the car is very similar. Um, it tells you all the dimensions on, on the back here, um, but what a thing to keep with the car really. So this car is equipped with a 1098cc BMC A-series engine. Uh, it's, it's got big valves in it, polished and ported head. Uh, it's got a Maniflow LCB exhaust and inlet manifolds. It's got a 40 DCOE Weber carburetor, ITG air filters, uh, power lights, high torque starter motor and a lightweight alternator it's got uh, a 544 camshaft in it so we reckon it will be good for about 100 horsepower or so uh, it, it's yet to be on the dyno as it's a it's a fresh build it's mated to a straight cut uh, quaif box and a limited slip differential we've got mini cooper s master cylinders uh, breather tanks the whole lot really uh, brand new wiring loom I had a special made radiator, alloy radiator, um, and it's, it's very, very close to being ready to go. So the interior of this car is very similar to the blue one. We've got a, a six point FIA approved roll cage that's been custom made and fitted. Uh, I've got a full lifeline fire extinguisher set up. I've got brake bias valves, so everything that it needs to be a, a racing car. I've got a little bit of original OEM equipment in here with little switch extensions and, and the dash and bits and pieces. Uh, and it's one thing I really like about 60s cars, you can sort of customise it and if you do a nice job, they really do make for nice classy cars. Um, and, and I think that's what I've tried to do here. So there's a bit of Alcantara and a bit of carbon fibre, we've got a lovely OMP racing bucket seat and, and, and steering wheel. Um, and believe it or not, the Speedo reads 33,282 original miles. Both cars have got a very similar suspension setup. This car's fitted with 800 pound springs on the front and 250 on the back whereas this car is fitted with 750 on the front and original springs on the back that have been re cambered to drop the car down. There's quite a lot of talk in the paddock about how to set these cars up. It does come down to the driver, obviously. A lot of people like to go stiff with the anti-roll bars on the front because you can't run them on the back. So you do get quite a lot of body roll, especially with it being quite a high center of gravity. Um, they're sort of compared to minis in a way, um, but they're a bit longer and obviously the drive's going through the rear, but they're just as fun to drive. Uh, but there's a lot of photos of me with, with the one wheel up in this, um, just because when you're pushing them, they, they do seem to lean over quite a bit. Um, so the, there, are, there are differences between the two. Uh, this one's still to be proved really, so it might go up to, to stiffer springs still. Um, but if you're trying to get into historic motorsport, we've got two different, completely different classes really. Uh, so this one's more eligible for CSCC swing in 60s or, or something along those lines where you're allowed to have your fiberglass boot lid and bonnet and doors um, and the bigger engine. And this is more if you're trying to get yourself into Goodwood, a nice um, 
period looking car with a period engine. Uh, obviously we're on Dunlop racing tyres on this car and Avon uh, turbo speeds on this car. So there's two very different cars here. Uh, and as I said, they will both be coming up for sale fairly soon. Uh, so if you are interested, please do get in touch. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and tune in for the next time at the racing years.